Hi everyone! In this video, we're going to be covering the LOS, explain the reinvestment assumption implicit in calculating the yield to maturity, and describe the factors that affect reinvestment risk. Now for this video, you would need a couple of prerequisites. One, what are the sources of income for a bond? Two, what is reinvestment income in a bond? And three, what is YTM? Now this LOS is extremely important. I do expect to see at least one or even two questions from this in the final exam. For any bond, the YTM is that discount rate that equates the present value of all future cash flows to the bond's market price. To explain what is the reinvestment assumption, I'm going to take the help of an example. Consider a 20-year treasury bond purchased at par with a face value of 100 and a 7% coupon rate paid semi-annually. The reason that paid semi-annually is in a parentheses because treasury bonds have coupons paid semi-annually and you are expected to know this in the exam. Every six months, the bond pays a coupon of 7% times 100, which is the par value, divided by 2 because it's a semi-annual. So $3.50. And it pays $103.50 at maturity. If you take the present value of all future cash flows at 7% per year or 3.5% every six months, then trust me, you get $100. Now, is the YTM the actual return you get on your investment? Let's find out how much money I would generate by the cash flows of the bond. That would be basically the income from coupon payments and the principal payments itself. So your coupon income would basically be the amount generated from your coupons. So we have for 20 years, two times a year at $3.50 per coupon, we get a total of $140. Your principal repayment would be $100. So the total income generated by the bond is $240. Annually, this works out to be 4.47%. Now just remember, the YTM is 7%. The actual amount of money earned by the bond over its tenure is called its realized yield. Now this could differ from its YTM. That means even if you know the YTM of the bond, you still won't know the actual return you would realize. The difference between a security's YTM and its realized yield is determined by the reinvestment income. Now the reinvestment income depends on the market interest rate available on the coupon payment date. Basically the three and a half dollars that I would get at t is equal to six months would be reinvested at the market rate available at t is equal to six months. And the future value of this three and a half dollars at t is equal to 20 years is unknown. And that value would actually depend on the interest rates prevailing at this date. In the same way, the future value of each of the 40 cash flows would depend on the respective market interest rates on these days. If you would like to realize a yield that is equal to the YTM, then the difference in the amounts should be provided by the last component of the bond's return, which is its reinvestment income. So continuing from our example, to realize a yield of 7% compounded semi-annually, the money that you would be required to generate over the life of the bond would be basically 100, which is your investment amount, times 1 plus 7% divided by 2 for 20 years semi-annually, which actually works out to $395.93 approximately. So the reinvestment income should basically be the required amount 
minus the amount generated by the bond, which was $240. So the reinvestment income should equal to $155.93 in order for the 7% YTM to be realized. Now, there are two important factors that affect the reinvestment risk of a bond. The reinvestment risk of a bond increases when the coupons are higher. That means bonds trading at a premium would have higher reinvestment risk than those trading at par or a discount. And two, longer maturities. That means for a coupon bond with a long tenure, the realized yield could be much higher than the YTM. If you can reinvest at higher interest rates compared to that of a bond with lower maturity. The reinvestment risk of a zero coupon bond is zero, irrespective of its maturity. Now this point is very important with respect to the exam. Let's take a look at a question. Okay, in this question, you have a 20-year treasury bond purchased at par with a 10% coupon rate paid semi-annually, and they're asking us how much reinvestment income should be generated to earn a YTM of 10%. Now, to actually earn a YTM of 10%, the amount that should be generated or the future value of $100 20 years from now is basically 100 times 1.05, which is basically half of 10% compounded for 40 periods. Now, this value works out to be $704. So $704 is required in order to generate 10%. Now the income generated by the coupons is equal to, for 20 years, you are getting paid $5 per coupon twice a year. So that works out to $200. And the principal repayment is equal to $100. So the total income earned by the bond is $300. So to find the required reinvestment income is basically 704 minus 300, which is equal to 404. So A is our answer. Now take a look at C. This is basically 704 minus 200. So in case you forget to add back the principal or amount, uh, then you would be marking the wrong answer. So C is a trap. A is the right answer. We've come to the end of another LOS. Thank you for tuning in.